Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today we'll be talking about the Gospels, evangelism, and more with Reverend Mary Tillman today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. I am Bernie Hayes. My guest is Reverend Mary Tillman. Reverend Tillman, how are you? I am wonderful. How are you today, Bernie? Um, great. Just to be near you is, is just a wonderful thing. <laughs> and uh, you, you, you're an evangelist. Yes, I am an evangelist. Tell, and, tell us what that means. Well, that means that I am not a pastor. I don't have a designated flock, but I do preach the gospel. And so I travel, I preach at my home church as well as any church where the opportunity is given. But I am a, a licensed ordained minister, and that's how the Reverend came into play. So I am Reverend Mary Tillman. I am an associate minister at the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, the historical Baptist church on the corner of Reverend G.H. Pruitt Place and Page Avenue. Wow. But do you been you've been also you know as the radio angel and, and Mary Tillman, <laughs> Reverend Tillman, you've been around a long time uh, preaching the gospel also through the media. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. uh, the radio angel came about uh, when I went to uh, from KIRL. That's where I got my start at the little radio station out in St. Charles. Uh, Saturday more a uh, Saturday morning praises with Mary Tillman. And once that folded, I thought I had retired, but I got a call in 2007 to uh, join a national radio company, uh, Radio One, and I was there for 14 years, and they said, you need a handle. So I decided I needed to pray about it and think about it. So after a couple of days, once I was hired, I told them that God had given me your radio angel, meaning I belong to the people, so I'm your radio angel. I'm not just a radio angel, but I belong to the people who listen to me and is my way of being connected to the community. So that's how Radio Angel came about, and I have used that. And I am now, now that we are no longer uh, with Radio One, we are now with Odyssey, uh, I am still the Radio Angel in my 15th year, Bernie, so I've been in radio for over 37 years. It's hard to believe, but God has been good to me. Very good to you. <laughs> Tell me the influence that Bill and Virginia White had on you at KIRL. Well, you know, it was small, and it was really uh, like a family. Uh, Bill and Virginia White were a, a couple that was just uh, encouraging. They wanted the best in the black community, and gospel music to flourish and driving to St. Charles and working out of that little trailer it just made me feel so at home. Mr. Bill White was a go-getter and he strived for excellence and he insisted and when I say insisted I do mean insisted that I get my FCC license uh, that I learn how to run the board that I learn how to queue up back in those days Back in 1985, when I started with him, we had to learn how to queue up records, you know, the LPs and what have you. So I've gone from the turntable to the carts <laughs> to now we're into a computer age where none of that, and now we're using uh, the board to run mm -hmm. everything is computerized. So it has been a transition, and I thank God for surrounding me with people like Bill that insisted that I learned the business, learned the trade, he would say. So I started out as a broker, Bernie, and a broker is a person that buys their own time on the radio station for 15, 30 minutes or longer. I had a 45-minute broadcast at 1460 KIRL, and that's how I started. He encouraged me to get sponsors. So I've been in sales. I've been uh, behind the board. I've been uh, running the board. So God, like I said, it's been a wonderful journey, and I am still thriving from those lessons that he taught me. Yeah, it's wonderful. A lot of folks forget that uh, when KIRL began, I was helped. I broke the ground 
uh, with Bill in Virginia. And oh, was, you did? <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was one of the very first announcers they had at KRL. Yeah, um, it was a journey, and you yeah, know what? Yeah. It, 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 there are so many memories. Uh, that was the one place where people knew if you wanted to know what was going on in the gospel world, gospel music world especially, you had to listen to KIRL and our, there were so many ministries there. And you know what? The important thing was the announcements by uh, Sister Eula J. Flowers. She would give the church news. And then we had the girl from Curl, Zella Jackson Price, who was the roving reporter. She <laughs> would let us know what was going on wherever you were in the city and the county, including St. Charles County. Yeah. Zella and I are still very much in, in, in contact with each other. Our health is uh, kind of failing now, but uh, she's going to be with us a long time, I sincerely hope. Absolutely, I hope so. That's my big sis. and she, Zella always encouraged everybody, whether you were good or not so good or just uh, really terrible, she would always encourage you, keep on coming, baby, keep on singing, you'll get better. So she has really been a light in the gospel music world to encourage especially young people coming up. She, people like her, Mother Ethel Foster, Dr. Mary Beth Gentry, Dello Thetford, those are the people that have helped shape our gospel music world. You know, uh, you too are a singer. People don't know about what a beautiful voice you have. <laughs> Something most people do. But you, you all of a been in some quartets. You have a singing career, and, yet, and you chose gospel. Why, why not uh, secular? Well, Bernie, you got to understand my upbringing, and it came from a very spiritual family. Uh, my grandparents, my mother, we were always in church, and from Sunday school, you know, morning service, BTU, and it was just gospel music was always around us, and that's, and my grandmother loved the Pilgrim Travelers and uh, the Fairfield Four back in the day, we were not allowed to even listen to rock and roll or R&B as, as we know it today. So we uh, learned because our life was the church. It was school and church, and that's where we went. So uh, I learned to play the piano. I started taking lessons at five. Uh, I played my first song in a church when I was 10 years old because the musician hadn't made it and I had to, I was reading music and it was really <laughs> one of those humble, humble beginnings, but because of the encouragement of others, I kept going and ended up becoming the musician of the junior choir and from there going on and playing and learning from other people and going around people who played the piano the way I wanted to play it. And so from there, it just grew Brother Columbus Gregory I uh, had a group, and he wanted me to play for another group, and he introduced me to Ruby Somerville Dix and my dear friend, God rest her soul, and we formed a group called the Angelette Gospel Singers. Yes, I have some pictures of you with the Angelette <laughs> Gospel Singers. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful group. Uh, you, you've done so much. How, how do you be inspired every day when you go on the radio, Mary? You know what? I love what I do, and I know God called me to do this. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a ministry with me, and uh, I don't do anything without consulting God. I, I love working in the church. I love doing the work of the church. I've always been a good student. I love learning. And so the book of Proverbs has really been my guide, and my favorite scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And those words stick with me constantly. And uh, that talks about trusting in the Lord with our whole heart, oh, oh Lord and not leaning to our own understanding, but asking him to direct our paths. And truly, Bernie, he has done just that for me. My life is really a joy, and I love living for the Lord. Reverend, tell me you've done so much, and I want to come, so many questions I want to ask you, and that's so much I want to do. But right now, uh, we're going to have to take a short break, just a very short break. But okay. I want people to know that uh, how inspiring you are, not only to me, but to, to so many, to thousands of others, millions perhaps. And uh, we we'll, uh, want people to know that uh, you are inspiring. You're an inspiration. Reverend Mary Tilman. We'll be right back after this. Thank you. 
This is an opportunity that God has given all of us at this time to work together to reopen 1411 Locust, which is so urgently needed at this community. I thank God for uh, Bernie Hayes and for his support and standing with us all these particular years. Now it's so critical that you and I do our part also, as Bernie's been partnering with us here at, at NLEC TV, we've continued to maintain the faith, continue to move forward, and now the doors have been open. The city of St. Louis has approved our architectural plans. We've been given the go-ahead to make the necessary renovations that are needed. We need some miracles, and that's why I'm asking all of you prayer warriors out there, all of you that are going to use that mustard seed of faith to remove the mountains. There's some mountains. Rich and powerful people who move back in the neighborhood, and they don't want 1411 locusts to open. They'd rather leave the people out on the street to slowly die, starved, used, misused, worked over by drug dealers, alcohol, and everything else. We want this place to be a place of hope for those that have lost all hope. And we want to open the doors, and we can do it. As you prayer warriors, go to God in earnest prayer, knocking on the doors of heaven. When he says, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Please continue to pray. Pray that God will just let the, the financial resources come in so we can make all of these repairs. He'll raise up the dedicated labors for the harvest, that we will continue to see Him do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can even ask or think. Yes, this is a spiritual battle. The principality and powers are fighting from every direction, but greater is He who's in us than He that's in the world. And that's why I'm asking all of you to join us in prayer. Believe God with us. Contact us at New Life Evangelistic Center if you believe that there's people God laid on your heart that we should see. As for myself, Larry Rice, or my grandson Chris Aaron Rice, that we can go visit and share the dream with you and call us at 314-421-3020. Please pray. Get involved now. We need the body of Christ to arise as we work together to reopen this building for the glory of God. And welcome back. My guest is Reverend Mary Tillman, the radio angel, our radio angel, your radio angel. Uh, well, Reverend Tillman, um, Tell us about the, the music that you, you select for your gospel programs and radio shows. Well, Bernie, you know, when I started out at KIRL in 1985, I used uh, my own music and brought it in. But now that we have automated to uh, computerized uh, radio stations now, I, I still have a board to operate, but uh, the music is selected by a program director and I have some input into some of the songs. I love featuring St. Louis artists because as you well know, we have so many great, and I do mean great gospel singers right here in St. Louis, down through the years going back to Mother Willa Mae Ford Smith, Sister Martha Bass, and on, on and on and on. And so uh, the, the songs that I choose to play are really, spiritually inspired, I always ask God, who, who needs to hear what? And whatever song he puts in my heart, I put it into the uh, song selection for that Sunday. But each Sunday on my current broadcast on 96.3 FM, Gospel Sounds of Joy, what I do is in the 8 o'clock hour, I feature two St. Louis artists. And that's important to me to let the people know that we've got some great artists here in St. Louis and my program director, Derek Green, has been very uh, gracious to allow me to have that freedom to send to him the songs that I would like to be included for the upcoming Sunday. And this gives St. Louis and our listeners across the country and around the world the flavor of what St. Louis has to offer. So well, every I'm, Sunday you can get some good gospel music from St. Louis. Yeah. A few years ago, though, you used to actually quote scripture and play music that would correspond with that scripture. How Absolutely. That? <laughs> well, there are so many great songs out here, and so yeah. the scriptures usually tie in. And when, for instance, let's use my favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Following that, if I were to give you this scripture for the week and a song was going to follow it, it would probably be the Reverend Cleophas Robinson Sr. singing, I will trust in the Lord until I die. Songs have a meaning, and when we talk about faith, I try to find a song that fits. Faith is, you know, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So God always gives me what I need when I need it because uh, I just start talking, and as I'm talking, he reveals to me what needs to be said or played, and that's what I do. I follow 
the spirit. Now, I know some people say, well, it's a business. I realize it's a business, but you know what? God comes first, and what he says do, that's what I do, and I don't mind, and I don't shy away from acknowledging that I use his spiritual guidance to do what I do. Say amen, somebody, the movie. Tell us about that, what influence it had on you. Say amen, somebody, the documentary that tells the story of gospel music right here in St. Louis for black history, for church history, for gospel music history. Everybody in the world needs to see Say Amen Somebody. It features St. Louis local artists that were really doing a great job, the famous O'Neill twins, you know, the uh, Interfaith Choir. As I said, Zella Jackson Price and so many more and we got to see St. Louis in action, and that has made a great impact. In fact, I was at the taping of that documentary, and it just filled my heart with joy to be included in such a circle. I mean, they brought in other people, too, but St. Louis was definitely on the roadmap. You were inducted into the St. Louis Black Radio Hall of Fame in 2016. And yeah. you've been so supportive. You are a board member of the St. Louis Black Radio Hall of Fame and the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. And now you're up for an award for the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. Tell us about that. Well, that is really an honor. I was so honored back in 2016 to be inducted into the St. Louis Black Radio Hall of Fame along with some of my cohorts like a gentleman Jim Gates and others, maybe EDB, and made me feel so good. And then just a couple of weeks ago, I received a phone call from uh, my program director and said, hey, Mary, did you know you've been nominated for, in the gospel announcer category for the National Black Radio Hall of Fame? And I'm going, no. And he said, are you serious? And I'm going, yes, I had no idea. And he says, well, I'm going to send you the link. And there in Urban Insight magazine, uh, Th that link, it showed different uh, categories, and there my name was at the top of the list, number one on the list, and he, I was like, oh my goodness, I am so excited. My church family and all the uh, affiliates that I have, I've been spreading the word how good God has been. To be even considered is an honor for uh, doing what I love to do. How can they reach you, Mary Tillman, Reverend Mary Tillman? I can be reached very easily. My phone number is 314-973-4341, or they can use, of course, my handle, radioangelstl at gmail.com. And can they, uh, how can they vote for you for the honor for the National Black Radio Hall of Fame? Well, you have to go to the... Uh, National Black Radio Hall of Fame, or go through. I, I went on the website and found the article, and that's how I got connected. Uh, the voting time, though, is very short. I don't know how much time, actually, that we have left, Bernie, but mm -hmm. it's the National uh, Black Radio Hall of Fame. Dot, dot com. Dot, I was trying to remember if it was dot com or it, dot org. It is okay. dot com, yes. Dot com, yeah. and, and cast your vote. But we're so excited about that, and, and I understand it's going to be taking place right here in St. Louis in October. Harris Stowe State University, October the 3rd. At the Performing Arts, Emerson Performing Emerson Arts. Emerson Performing Arts, yeah, October Absol the 3rd. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure that my St. Louis family and my listeners will be there to support me. I'm counting on you, St. Louis area, from everywhere. But, Bernie, you know what one of the main things that I really love about radio you don't know who's listening. You don't know what, what uh, you're saying is how it's influencing or impacting people. But because of radio, all the way over in Afghanistan and other areas, I received information from the people in the military saying how much they were glad that I was on the radio. It gave them a sense of some being at home. Yeah. So I'm glad that Radio goes where we can't go, and we can still be a blessing. Right. You were recently in the Emerson Performing Arts Center at Harris Stowe State University paying tribute to the late Columbus Gregory. I actually was, and mm -hmm. Columbus Gregory was a great blessing to me. Uh, he gave us a lot of 
insight and, and he showed us how humility really does pay off. Columbus Gregory was one of a kind, the little man with the big voice. You know, and another thing I want to get to the, in our next segment, I want to talk about the Gospel Hall of Fame that is coming, but also I want people to know that you were the MC uh, for these different programs for the Gospel shows through the Black Radio Hall of Fame. You were uh, for the Columbus Gregory tribute, for the Gospel show that we had earlier. And uh, so you, you not only is, is a member, but you're a very active member, <laughs> usually <laughs> right there on the podium emceeing the program. Well, I love to MC programs. I love to, you know, be the facilitator and the worship leader to expedite the program along because I love what I do. And there are always so many wonderful things you can say to people to encourage them. But if you're going to be a part of an organization, I think you need to give your talent, give your gift that you have to make sure that things go smoothly. And God has given me a voice. And I, one of our late pastors, the late Reverend Adrian Jones said to me one day, uh, years ago, Mary Tillman, why do you think God gave you that melodious voice? And I said, I don't know. Maybe I'm to be his mouthpiece. And from that, things started happening. And then a few years later, I was actually called into the ministry to preach God's word, not knowing when I made that statement way back then that God would use me in such a powerful way. And I don't take it lightly, and I will not allow anyone to cause me to bring shame to the name of Jesus Christ. Reverend Mary Tillman is our guest, and we'll be right back after this. The Bernie Hayes program is uh, produced at NLEC TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the Work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily, but we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. <music> Our Black History subject for today is legendary dancer, choreographer, and anthropologist Catherine Dunham, who was born June 22, 1909. In 1940, she formed the Catherine Dunham Dance Company, which became the premier facility for training dancers. Alumni include Perfect Kit, Marlon Brando, and Julie Belafonte. She directed the Catherine Dunham School of Dance in New York and was artist in resident at Southern Illinois University. She was called the matriarch of black dance. Dunham accepted a position at Southern Illinois University in East St. Louis in the 1960s, and during her tenure, she secured funding for the Performing Arts Training Center. She was a recipient of Kennedy Center's Awards Honor and many other honors and a star on the St. Louis Walk of Fame. Durham passed away on Sunday, May 21, 2006, at the age of 96. Catherine Dunham. Prayer is so important to the life of Christians and it helps us grow as a community and seek to love others better. Prayer changes us from the inside out. We need to pray boldly, confidently that God hears us, that He desires us to pray, and that He's going to extend the grace and the power and the strength to answer our prayers as we invite Him into active aid in the problems that we see in the world around us today. You make a difference when you pray. Please pray for New Life Evangelistic Center as we seek God working in the midst of the homeless, the hurting, the broken, as we seek God uh, working in Ukraine and uh, around the world. We need your prayers. Please go to the Lord in prayer. Invite him into active aid. You make a difference. Pray. And welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is Reverend Mary Tillman. She's an evangelist. She's a radio host. She is the radio angel in the city of St. Louis and all across the world. Uh, Reverend Tillman, I understand there's a gospel, hall of, gospel music hall of fame coming to St. Louis. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I am so excited. I am so wrapped up into this project. It is called the Gospel Music Hall of Fame of Missouri. And I tell you, it's being led by some young ladies and some investors who are excited about doing something wonderful for our city on one of the holy corners, 500 Washington uh, out at Kings Highway. You know, that's just a historical site, Bernie. And for the people that are involved already to spearhead this, I'm encouraging everybody in the state of Missouri to get behind this particular project because there is so much history in St. Louis regarding gospel music. You are on a board, aren't you? Yes, I am. Uh, I am on the Butler Group uh, Board of Directors, uh, Monica Butler, along with Lynn Woods and several other major people that are really pushing this. And you know, Bernie, it's important that we get behind our music and that we make sure we have a place for all of the artifacts that we have. Remember back in the day, the posters that used to be put on the telephone poles with all the national artists coming yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, The Baptist building has memories, the Religious Ringside Center, the Victory Center. There is so many people and so many wonderful groups. And, you know, people like the Reverend Flynn Bronner of the famous Bronner Brothers, you know, still here in the city of St. Louis and very active. We just honored him a few months ago uh, with uh, their gold and platinum music. So many things, you know, the Reverend J.E. Turner that came here with uh, Platinum Records. And so we've got so much, so much history here that we need a place so our young people and those of us who love gospel music can see how we have evolved from it being just the quartets. Because people forget, quartets were the first recording artists and then came along with the choirs. And when the Hawkins hit the, st hit the scene, it just became a live thing. And so, but we've got great, when I tell you there are some great artists from St. Louis and in St. Louis still, we're here and we deserve to have this uh, mu this mu gospel music hall of fame and we need your support. Mm -hmm. Well, the Butlers visited the National Black Radio Hall of Fame recently and they got some more ideas and saw some of the gospel greats that are in the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. But uh, there, there's so much more to, to do so many more things to, to ask you about, and uh, we just don't have the time to do so. But Mary Tillman, and Reverend Mary Tillman, um, the National Black Radio Hall of Fame honors you and honored you, and now they want to steal you into this, this wonderful thing. So once again, how can they reach you and perhaps find out how to vote for you? Well, you can reach me by calling 314-973-4341 or email, which is radioangelstl at gmail.com. That's the way to reach me personally. And to vote, go to National Black Radio Hall of Fame dot com. Yes. Okay. National Radio Black, National Black Radio. Black Radio. Black Radio. Hall of yeah, Fame. And, and you know what? I'm excited about that because uh, I had no idea when I started this journey I would be even doing this this long or getting this type of recognition. So to all of you that are lovers of gospel music, I hope you tune in each Sunday morning at 8 o'clock on 96.3 for Gospel Sounds of Joy with your radio angel. And you can always send me information that's happening in your church or even in the community, Bernie. You know, it's not just for church announcements, but for community announcements as well. I want to say thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you so very, very much. Good luck to you and all your endeavors. And I'm so glad to say hello to Reverend Mary Tillman. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. And each and every one of you, don't forget now about the New Life Evangelist Center. We're located 2428 Woodson Road in Oldham, Missouri, 63114. Support Reverend Larry Rice. He's been supporting you for more than 50 years. I am Bernie Hayes. Have a great day. If you're not vaccinated, please get your shots. Until next time.